52. The Jerry Ryan Show, Monday to Friday, 9 till 12 on 2FM. Now, we shall settle down and we will control ourselves, won't we? I would sincerely hope so. Yes, good, good. Joining me now is a man who, without doubt, has lived a charmed life. He's an actor and a director with a long list of awards to his name, a knighthood, a CBE for humanitarian achievements and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And she saw Glenn Close trying to make love to her star actually the other day in the paper. It was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely photograph. He has uttered the immortal words that every boy from every generation of the last 50 years or so has hoped one day would be his. My name is Bond, James Bond. In seven Bond movies, he has kissed the girls, he has done the stunts, had the gadgets and the martinis shaken but not stirred and a lot of fun in between. And I can testify personally that he's still taking the martinis at the very least. His book, My Word is My Bond, is the tale of his life with photographs, for those of you who can't read, from the early days struggling as an actor to the life of a legendary movie star with an enviable list of friends including Frank Sinatra, Elvis, Audrey Hepburn, Michael Caine, Gregory Peck, David Nimmin, even David Niven, to name just a few. He's been a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF for the past 19 years and he's in, uh, well he's in all over the papers this morning, to put it mildly and in Dublin this week to launch a 1 million euro fundraising drive for UNICEF um, in collaboration with Topaz at their four courts all throughout the country. I am talking of course of Sir Roger Moore, good morning and welcome. Uh, good morning and thank you very much and I'm so glad I could get here in time to claim the 5,000 euro well done. because I know who is going to be inaugurated. Oh my God, he's not going to say it. Oh he? yes it is, it's George Washington <laughs> and I want the money now, it goes to UNICEF. <laughs> Well, that would be a challenge, all right, for the person who's now hiding, probably, who's going to win it. We thought we'd give away 5,000 today because it was so bleak. I listened to the news and it just sounded like heaven was falling on earth. And I thought, we have to get it's Friday. We have to cheer them up in some way or another. Well, I think it's a wonderful thing to do. Now, welcome. Um, I had the pleasure of having dinner with you the other night and... Um, uh, you're a very attractive and attentive wife, Christina. My, da- my darling, Christina. And um, we were also in the in somewhat hysterical company. Uh, he was out, I think, on day release. Harry Crosby was with us. <laughs> 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 they were t- Rita and Harry were two of the nicest, funniest people ever. They they, they set you off very well, and I I, I thought that I'd. Christina said to me the next morning because she's Swedish and, and uh, very sensitive. She said, I think you upset, Harry. You, you, uh, I said, why? She said, you told him he looked Japanese. Well, you did tell him for some reason that you felt he looked Japanese. Well, he got Japanese <laughs> eyes. He has Japanese eyes, apparently. And that has been, that's official now. So Roger Moore has identified Harry Crosby's Japanese eyes, which may help because their economy is the least yeah, failing of yeah. them all. But it really didn't upset him, I tell you, because he... he mm. He said that if I uh, invite the pop stars or musical stars, he will put on the concert at the point for UNICEF. That's right. He will give over the O2 for um, a concert. He will donate. I think, I, I believe, one million euros at one point has been mentioned. Yes. Um, and uh, so all we have to do, I think there was a bunch of us involved, was get the names to appear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, I gather, have to make a performance. Uh, a per- well, I would you know, get up and play the comb and handkerchief. Yes, and that may, in fact, people may pay to stop that. Who knows? Now, um, let's let's first of all talk about the book, because we've already, you and I have had a very long chat yesterday, which will um, surface as a, a, a Ryan Confidential in the not-too-distant future. And um, it's you have such, um, an, uh, not a, an extensive past and pedigree. It's very hard to cover your life story in, in such a short time. But I'm mindful almost instantly of um, the enormous amount of um, appearances that you have made on television and um, on the silver screen. Um, and we tend to forget at this stage, because you aren't in a wheelchair and you haven't fallen over, <laughs> that you've been around for quite some time and you have really done a lot. Seven bonds. You're the longest serving bond. Uh, seven seven mm. bonds, 118 saints, 24 persuaders, 39 Ivanhoes, 20 mavericks, 
27 Alaskans. <sighs> Yeah, and a couple of movies. And a couple of movies in between. And in fact, if anybody's gone, Maverick, what was he? he you were, in fact, the the English brother or cousin. Well, or, yes, a Beauregard. He, yeah. he had actually been sent to England because he, he was in disgrace. Uh, he had, wasn't cheating at poker. And so the family <laughs> sent him away and he came back and he spoke like me. And and he fitted into a western. Yeah. Did you like playing a cowboy? Uh, uh, well, I, I like gentleman cowboy. Yeah, I, I like horses and mm. sort of galloping around and mm. like the pistols very much. But I, I I got sort of very fed up with the cowboy boots. And one day I was sitting on the back lot uh, doing a press interview, and my feet were hot pinched and I said you know the, the problem was in the old west the reason there were so many gunmen they went around killing one another where well, they wore cowboy boots they pinch your toes and you've got high heels and you're uh, very uncomfortable and I was sent for about a month later by Bill Orr who was the son-in-law of uh, Jack Warner and head of television and he said you've got to stop saying these things about uh, boots the cowboys because mm. Acme Boots company that supply our boots are very upset so i said i'm sorry and i went to my next interview and i said and they wore the acme boots <laughs> I left and that was for, the end I, I left for shortly after that in fact you've had an interesting uh, relationship with those who've been commercial commercially associated with the productions you've been in lotus were extremely kind to you weren't they in the bond <laughs> movie they off- offering me the uh, the, the Lotus Esprit at ten percent off. Now, just how barking mad is this as a plan? He's in his. I don't know which. How far are you to into the Bond movies by this stage when you're driving the Lotus Esprit? I think that was Bond number three, number three. or four. Number three or four. So it would be fair to say you have completely established yourself as the face of the brand. You are James Bond, the length and breadth of the world. Lotus, of course, always. Um, not if, if not a struggling brand, a brand fighting for its place in the marketplace. They've scored the big one. They've got James Bond not driving a DB, but driving a Lotus. And what do they offer, Roger? They offer him a 10% discount instead of 10 free cars. Yeah. What did you tell them to do with their 10% discount? Uh, well, I, I told them they should give it to charity. Yes. To yeah. UNICEF, of course. Yeah, to UNICEF. Um, now that you've raised UNICEF... Um, and you spoke very movingly of her yesterday when we were in conversation. Audrey Hepburn, who introduced you to mm. UNICEF. Um, by this stage, you were not finished, I think, with the world of show business, but certainly you were maybe casting your attention around looking for something else to do and maybe something that would leave a legacy that you could um, not only be entertained by, but very proud of. Um, and she very gracefully pulled you in to UNICEF. Well, I, I'd moved to, uh, at this point, I'd moved to Switzerland a number of years before. And while it, when I was living in England, I was uh, chairman of a, a, an organization called SOS, which they're now politically incorrect, but it's, the title then was the Stars Organization for Spastics. And we ran uh, a couple of homes. And I was sort of one of the, the active fundraisers. And I was also a barker with the Variety Club. But having found myself in Switzerland, uh, I, I couldn't uh, take care of those charities. And uh, when Audrey came along and introduced me to, to UNICEF, uh, recruited me, I was very convinced that this was something I could do. I would be happy. And, uh, and I have never regretted one, one day since 18 years that uh, I, you know, I, I spoke with Jim Grant, who was the uh, then the executive director of UNICEF, uh, and he said, you know, to do it, you've got to go out in the field. And they said, and I had to sign a contract. Uh, I get paid by UNICEF, which is a dollar a year, which is tax free, and I don't have to give any any commission to my agent. Oh. And Christina's listening to this. Oh, she didn't know about it. Oh, dear. What a fool. What a fool I am. Anyway, I went off to uh, Central America, to Guatemala, and to, to Honduras, and Salvador, and Costa Rica. And this I've written about in, in the, in in the, the book. book. In fact, the, 
I delivered more words than I'd been contracted to do for the book. And I said, but I haven't finished because I still have sex and I would like to call around the world in 80 years, which is <laughs> my uh, UNICEF uh, travels. And uh, Michael O'Mara, the, the uh, publisher, said, well, I, you know, we, we, everything is set with, you know, for the type and the, the size. It may be very difficult. Uh, but as I sent the pages in, each country, country by country, he said, no, I think this is too important, and I'm going to find a way of doing it. And, and at the same time, he said, I would like to give a percentage of the book to UNICEF, which uh, I, you know, I was so grateful. This January, be a winner and bring some sunshine into your life with 2FM and Falcon Holidays. 31 days, 31 holidays, 31 winners, and all on one station. You've just won yourself some sunshine, Nora, for two people to create. Oh, thank you so much. Well done, you've just won a holiday to Sorrento. Well done. Well done, you've just won yourself some sunshine. You've won a holiday worth 1,300 quid for two people to Bulgaria. It's thank yours. You much. You're going to Cyprus. <laughs> Thanks so much. Well done, Ian Ryan. Bring back the sunshine with Falcon Holidays this summer and win with 2FM. For more, check out falconholidays.ie and rte.ie slash 2FM. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome. Um, my Word is My Bond. That's the title of the book. Um, and uh, the author, Sir Roger Moore, is in studio. We are now joined by um, uh, young Ryan Tuberty. Just fresh good morning, from good short morning. Good, good morning, Roger. Good morning, Jerry. Morning. Of course, your long program. How long was your program today? How long was th- your program today? I think we today? squeezed it in before. we Anyway, we're out by 10, gone yeah. out the door. Excellent. What, can I just say to, your, to, to you, Jerry, I don't know yeah. if this is going to be lost on your listeners, that yeah. is uh, how well uh, Roger Moore looks this morning. I mean, you look, you just, you look extraordinarily well. I spoke to you briefly on the phone. <laughs> He's afraid, because I've said this to him already in the met. interview. He's afraid that it's a homosexual advance that's being made. It's one of, I suppose, distinctly platonic admiration from afar well, then would you cut your hand off my knee yeah, but I can't alone. help it I'm Stop excited to be with you do you know what happened I was watching um, The Spy Who Loved Me the other night oh, yes, is that yeah. Barbara Back is Barbara Back to front yeah ba- ba- did, she, did she marry Ringo or Ringo, Ringo Starr yeah, Ringo, yeah. Ringo yeah. who's yeah. binning everything binning it he's got, did you, and he's, he's also been very <laughs> rude to his fans yeah. Yeah. Ring, yeah, Ringo yeah. Starr went on, on his website stop to, writing to stop me stop writing to me peace and love I hate you peace and love and F off get stuffed peace and love so Barbara Back was Sir Roger's Bird in The Spy Who Loved Me, which yeah. is the best, I think you said once before. And my favourite. Your yeah. favourite yeah. film, favorite. and also possibly your favourite uh, Bond tune. Would that be right? The Carly Simon, Nobody Does It Better? Well, I, it is such a, it is an iconic tune. I mean, and an iconic look. Live and Let Die. Yeah, Live and Let Die was great. Boom, boom, boom. But when you were do, 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 Actually, I'm after getting a pain in my chest. When you were young and your heart was an open book. And that was, of course, that was also Sir George Martin, who did the brilliant arrangements for the the Beatles. Great orchestral. Do you remember the living that day? It was all the kind of like the voodoo. Yeah. 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 That was kind of crazy. There, there, <laughs> there were a funny bit. The we had a small part actor who played right in the the, the pre-title sequence, yeah. uh, being tied up to. He, he was a British consul or something, tied to the, the totem pole or whatever they call it, and the snake is around there. Yeah, <laughs> and it had props. Yeah. And Guy Hamilton said, "Okay, cut is as you can step out." And the fellow's head was down. He had passed out completely, <laughs> <laughs> absolute fear, with a puddle around his ankle. <laughs> Oh, and I don't blame him. There was a, there was a fascination with those bonds uh, with voodoo yeah. and and you know trance uh, inducing the dark and, arts uh, and a lot of politically incorrect stuff. It wouldn't be really no. that easy to put that into a movie now. Um, but boys, was it entertaining because it was always an opportunity for Bond to run through a um, you know um, Do you remember the, the, a parade the, of naked women or the the alligators' heads. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. tiptoeing over those or the crocodiles. The, well, that was fun. And what about um, <laughs> View to a Kill? That was Christopher Walken with uh, Chris, Chris Jones. Yeah, Chris Walken. That, that was my last. Uh, uh, not my favourite, but I love Chris Walken. He's a Great actor. wonderful actor. Why did you so Why do you think The Spy You Love Me is your favourite? The Spy? I, well, first of all, it was the first film I did with Lewis Gilbert, yeah. the director, who's just a wonderful, marvellous director and has exactly the same, well, 
I flatter myself by thinking I have the same sense of humor that he does, but the same things made us laugh, and we were sort of rather idiotic. We were, we were, we were filming uh, the Iguazu Falls uh, in South America. Uh, we'd got on the plane and we're leaving, and, and Lewis and I are sitting in the, the front seat side by side, and we're talking as the plane kept going around. The, the pilot would want to show people the Iguazu Falls. But we we were bored. We'd been climbing all over the damn things. We wanted to get away, get back to Rio, have a, have a meal. And we started talking about... Do you, do you, do you remember uh, the, those uh, sherbet dabs where you had a licorice? Yeah. And they oh, said, yeah. Sherbet dips, yeah. 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 And they yeah. say, oh, yeah. But what about what about the boiled sweets, you know, that was lemony, and the sherbet was inside? Lovely. They, they, oh, yeah. they, and... Yeah. Well, how about chocolate caramels? And we mm. just talked and talked. About Cabri food, Stereo Flake. No, about sweet, sweet, sweet chocolate. Massive. Like, absolutely right. And I thought it was perfectly all right. They're all, uh, you know, speaking Brazilian behind me. Not at all. As the plane came out, I thought, well, that was a very nice, uh, a very nice flight, wasn't it, darling? Mm. Yes, honey. <laughs> <laughs> and wasn't it so interesting listening to Mr. Bond speaking about the Sherbert? The Sherbert. <laughs> Tell us about the Sherbert again. Um, mm-hmm. the, the Bond does the, is the Bond thing now. I mean, do you do you like do you like talking about it? Or do you get bored? You know, I, uh, I talk about anything. What's your favorite one, Jerry? My yeah. favorite. And Rod- your favorite Roger, Roger Moore one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think for your eyes only. For your eyes only. Everybody. Everybody. Oh, Sheena Easton. Yeah. Who oh, became, sh- oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, she, Sheena Easton. One, became one of the wealthiest women excited. in America. Yeah, yeah. No, she, 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 very big um, brains. Yes. Ample. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, what, what? Cub, Cubby brought her out to... Uh, to New York for the promotion of the film, she's got the she's doing the song and and I was sitting watching breakfast television that she was on and Cubby was watching it apparently at the same time and there she, all she did was uh, talk about her new record Morning Train never mentioned Bond why she was there at all and Cubby Aussie. Cubby said she can get the next goddamn train to London. <laughs> <laughs> It's terrible. Cause I thought you were going to tell us that you, you know, you walked in on her in the shower. No, or something. no, no. She, no. Was, she was all talking about the album without mentioning the song that made her. Essentially, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, you know, yeah, which, yeah, is, yeah, extraordinary. which is outrageous. But well, there you are. That's but, life. Now, you, he is. You know, he's quite anti-violence, Roger. You're, you, you, you don't like guns. Um, I mean, Daniel Craig's not the first guy to, you know. Utter the Can I ask, do you impossible think that, word. I don't like weapons. You know. I know, but do you, do, do you think Daniel Craig has a sense of humour? And if so, where is it? He rates Daniel Craig. No, I appreciate Bond. that entirely. But the, the humor you did, you did. He, I think Sir Roger Moore brought the humor to Bond like no other. But I think actor. you see, what, but the, with Casino Royal, they went back to the first Bond. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. that was the beginning of Bond, and I think Bond was sort of establishing himself. I think by the time they get to number three, he'll be making a few jokes. Oh, good. Oh. Oh, so maybe he's settling yeah. in. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I know. I think that the, the the character itself, not his his interpretation, will be allowed to do it. Uh, I, I'm quite sure. I'm sure that's well. In Quantum of Silence, or not Silence, Solace, Solace. whatever that means. Um, no one knows. Uh, it is actually a Quantum of Silence because he he has very little dialogue. I was saying that it's I thought ultimate. it was terrible. It was uh, terrible. Yeah. So I loved Casino Royale. I thought it was fantastic. Oh, yeah, excellent. Film. He, you are very, very strict about what you say about the other bonds. That's fair enough. It's if no. you don't have anything good to say, you don't say anything. Is that mm. it? There's a code of sort of. Decency about it. Well, I, 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 do, I don't think it's for me to to criticise uh, another Bond. If I've got something great to say, I I can say it. But I did not see the, the other Bonds except uh, you, you know an entire film. I saw little bits of them. Why didn't you watch them? Uh, I I did not want to anybody to say what did you think. Oh really? So you avoided and them on I, that basis? And and I could be absolutely honest when I say I haven't seen it. It this is like Gay like, Burn. That's what's going to say. I've never Don't seen the late late. Never see it. Who's that? Don't listen. Well, to it's it. a surefire way of not. But not only that. In the book, um, my word is my bond. You also um, tell us about what the protocol was when you know when you were going to see the movie for the first time. Nowadays, many actors will have sat in on the edit. They'll have been par- they'll have par- been part of the structuring of the mm. edit, even, and um, they may have opinions regarding the the release. There's two different types of endings. They may be asked their opinions about that or not. You never got to see anything until the premiere. Oh no no no! Oh. I, I I used to go to the dailies. Oh, uh, did you? Yeah yeah yeah. I saw. The- 
because because we're going to see watch the gags. The outtakes are the intakes. <laughs> they, they were intakes, but we didn't see what I got up to. <laughs> were you allowed to have any it. editorial? Were you allowed to say, "Look, I looked. I don't really unhappy about that bit." Uh, uh, well, yes, of course. You know, if you're playing the lead in something, you, you for, for any length of time, uh, your your opinion is listened to, mm. not necessarily taken uh, attention to, but listened to. What was your favourite piece that you? Like, do you mind if I ask? What was your no, favourite piece well, uh, like, free. that you've done? <laughs> you, Barbara Bach. No, 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 not your favourite piece. <laughs> what was your favourite uh, thing that you've done on on movies? I know uh, my favourite piece of Barbara Bach. Is it a single or a plural? I don't so, want to speak no, about no, it now. I Thanks. just want to ask you what was the what was the best thing you you did post Bond that you're proudest of? Stay, post, yeah. post 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 Bond, yeah. Post Bond. Well, obviously, I think I think uh, working with UNICEF. Yeah, uh, but in terms of of acting, of, of, of acting, uh, around the time that I was doing Bond, you know, I was doing the the uh, thing with Burton and Harris, uh, shout at the De- sh- doing shout at the devil, uh, the wild geese. Yeah, uh, film I enjoyed very much in in India in Goa with with Gregory Peck and David Niven. And you enjoyed that. Yeah, it's a break, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, from in fact, way. Niven Niven is spoken of very fondly in the book. You you had a, a, a yeah. you, you had a lot of time for Niven. You liked him. Well, he was. Uh, what was he like, Roger? Better. Oh, wonderful man and funny and uh, one of the great raconteurs. Uh, he would tell you know I knew the moon is a balloon backwards and Incredible. bring on the empty horses yeah. because I knew the stories uh, and. He embellished them. No, I don't think any of them were true. He, <laughs> he just would say it long enough that it was he got the right laugh, and so that was his his funny stories about his first break in in movies in Hollywood when he got there after uh, sort of leaving the army, uh, and uh, he had to borrow uh, he, he, the director. Yeah, he met a director in the steam room. And they gave him a, 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 a bit in a film at RKO, and he had to wear white tie and tails. Everything was white tie and tails in those days. If you were sent for by Joan Crawford to have a little dinner tete a tete, you had white tie and tails. They weren't on for very long, I might say. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he never told me. But, anyway, but he had to borrow the white tie and tails from Herbert Marshall. Herbert Marshall was an English actor yes. uh, who unfortunately lost a leg in the First World War. Uh, so he had an artificial limb, uh, and it, it, but he had to have his flies on the opposite side. As you do when you have an artificial leg. Yeah, yeah. uh, I have no idea why, but he does. Mm. And so Niv borrowed his trousers, but he couldn't. He was so nervous he couldn't get the buttons done up because they were the wrong way. <laughs> and he said he had to get the the, the uh, wardrobe lady in with a crochet hook to, <laughs> to put him in. And then he had to walk around at the party. And, and say, it was a w- wonderful evening and thank you very much. And he, his mouth was so dry that his lip stuck to the top <laughs> of his teeth, rather like Humphrey Bogart. And he was going, around, it's been an absolutely wonderful party. <laughs> and thank you very much. And the drink said, cut. The crew burst into applause. Uh, uh, David found absolutely wonderful. And then the director said, we had just a technical problem. We have to go again. Just like that, you were great. Niv's lip dropped down over his teeth and he played and he was relaxed. He found out years later the director had told the crew to applaud at the end of the scene. And there you are. That was, that was, but whether, how true that was, I don't know. Of course, he was a compatriot of Errol Flynn's and, uh, and the, some of the stories in The Moon's I think there were the shenanigans yeah. comes to mind there. Um, got up to he also got to play Bond too in a spoof version of yeah, Casino, Casino Royale. Royale yeah. 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 Can I mention uh, the topaz? Uh, yes, in the papers mention whatever today, you wish. In the in a lot of the tabloids, lovely pictures of you uh, involved with the the topaz deal that yeah, you signed exactly. at the petrol station. Which one, is pretty good. A, was it two cents for every transaction? Is, it's a wonderful initiative, and those two cents add up very to quickly. UNICEF, yeah. uh, very quickly goes to UNICEF, and it will go for our work. You know, you say people say, will say, "Well, you know, what's two cents going to do?" Two yeah. cents a lot of them would are. actually uh, supply ten liters of safe drinking water. Yeah. Two cents. There you go. It's simple. How elegant is this 
gentleman here. Extremely elegant. Will you be wearing a tuxedo? Will you be wearing a tuxedo on Tubber Tea tonight, tomorrow night? The chat show tomorrow night. I, I, I should be wearing a frock. A frock? A frock. Oh, that would be quite interesting. interesting. Well, we're, yeah, yeah. we're looking forward to, 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 to yeah. welcome you on the show tomorrow because people will see you, having heard you extensively this morning with Jerry, they'll see you tomorrow night with me, which is great fun. Um, Sorry, Ryan. They're playing with pens. No, at the no, it's just that I was, I was writing away. Sir Roger was signing my book there and he was just saying, so is this your pen? It's a Mont Blanc, which he explained that he was, uh, Sir Roger was in the Guinness Book of Records for having the most expensive pen ever, ever, ever. which was uh, Mont Blanc gave it to me because it was a pen used in the man with the golden gun oh, and described the pen and it was solid gold with a diamond in the end now let see my plastic thing there's a fountain yeah. pen was plastic I can't yeah. compete with that Guinness no, Book of no, no you yeah, can't but I could never use it because I had this habit you know with the signing autographs and then and handing, handing the pen, the pen no, over be doing that. Did you hand, what did you do with the Guinness Book of Records pen where's that oh that's locked up in a safe I should bloody well hope so and we were just talking about what was the th other thing we mentioned uh, book the sign. man with the golden um, gun book, yeah sorry uh, man a man with the golden gun uh, you, well you have another pet name for that film but we don't need to get into the man with now. the golden ting yes well we keep going and the point was that do you remember the fantasy island fella hey bat the plane the plane tattoo oh. do you remember the little well early early little shares well, that's roger moore's impression of him where what was he like where's he from do you remember that he was in that it was all <laughs> creepy with the hall of mirrors and the oh <laughs> you, he was <laughs> terrifying he was, he was terrifying ter himself terrifying what he was a sex maniac was he? He's a dwarf. Like but apparently, uh, the, uh, what's that the politically size? correct phrase for the small people? Um, small. Midgets, is it? No, minuets. No, no, no. Oh, no. Tiny no. fellas. Diminutive. Diminutive. But Diminutive. apparently, Diminutive. they have enormous todgers and and huge amounts of energy. Well, this is what this would explain <laughs> Fantasy Island, man. Is that not true? No. Well, you Deirdre, can't. you sent that in. It's on the screen there. First of all... If that's made up, I'll be very disappointed. That's really unfair. And secondly, and it's not true, and secondly, because I, even though I don't know, but I will say this, I'm definitely trying to rescue this. <laughs> secondly, <laughs> tell us about this uh, sex maniac from Fantasy Island who then was on Man from the Golden Gun. Is this happening or am I dreaming? No, oh, this, this is, is so not weird. happening. No, Roger so. Moore, Jerry Ryan, no, no, myself, um, talking no, about this guy from Fantasy no, Island. No, okay, no, it's like a beginning of a joke. Uh, 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 was sort of mad about ladies. And he Which would, is allowed. And he'd nice. take a flashlight and go down to the, while we were in Hong Kong and in Bangkok, and he'd go to the girly clubs and he would line the girls up and flash the torch up and down them and say, you, you, not you, you, you. And, <laughs> and when we left, when we left uh, Bangkok, we were about to leave Bangkok, I said, how many women have you had since you've been here? This is 45. <laughs> I, I said, but it really doesn't count because you pay. He says, oh, yes, it does, because even when they pay, sometimes they refuse. <laughs> uh, it was, but, yeah, he, 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 I'm joking. But I felt so, so badly. What a great story. <laughs> but I felt so badly at the end of the film uh, when I have to sort of stick him in a suitcase. Uh, I thought it was so cruel. I know, but you loved it. Secretly. I know, but you loved it, and also it's, it, may, it may not be politically correct, but I mean he was warm and safe. My word is my bond by Sir Roger Moore. Sir Roger will be signing his book at Eason's um, in on O'Connell Street in Dublin on Saturday at two p.m. Sure. Please do come along. And can I just say, from having had some personal experience, no licking. Okay, all right. Can we just clear that up? That you're not allowed lick him. All right, that's not allowed. You know, like that, no? Tuberty, no, know. Tuberty is the um, Tuberty. MC tonight at oh, the casino Barnett night. For the UNICEF uh, fundraiser tonight. Uh, that's very that's good. Right. I look forward to that. And he's only charging 5,000 euros, which is a, a huge reduction in his yeah. normal well, fee. the 5,000 he's going to get <laughs> for knowing right. that George Washington is <laughs> going to be inaugurated. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah right. it, precisely. And uh, yes, it's And great. on Tuberty tonight, Ro Sir Roger will be um, your guest. 9.35, quite early tomorrow, so look forward to that immensely. I'm... Thanks enormously time, pleased by this experience Likewise. wonderful to meet you um, I would like you to leave us with the advice that Frank Sinatra gave you before he died you got to love living kid yeah because dying's he said he said dying ain't easy and he had also said that uh Life is wonderful, but old age is shit. <laughs> so let's enjoy ourselves, shall we? Good morning. <laughs>
we, we, we love new, new music. 2FM is the home of Rick O'Shea. Monday to Friday, 2.30 to 5 p.m. On Ireland's biggest music radio station. Living the life, loving the music. 2FM! 2FM! Call the Ryan line now. 1850-715-922. Ah, uh, yes, I'm a little ill. I don't know what it is. Could even be a big ill. Okay, right. Thank you. That's very good. Well done. Thank you, Louise. I have the uh, book here. I may have lost her caller, but the recommendation that she's given is uh, Carol Stock Kranovitz. That's Carol, second name, Stock, S-T-O-C-K, and K-R-A-N-O-W-I-T-Z. Um, recognising and coping with sensory processing disorders. Apparently, the theory here is that all of these actions, head shaking, head banging, are all um, techniques employed by instinctively by children to help cope with their environment. Um, and you need to identify this early, apparently, and early intervention is very important in order to prevent um, the thing either escalating or becoming a problem. And let's be honest about it, if your child's banging their head off a uh, off a fireplace, it is a problem. What's wrong with you? What are you doing? Am I normally in this seat? No. Is there some? Should wanna, I be there? Do you want to move it a bit into the centre? I'm just confused. But if I'm normally the center, in this seat, I've got a different eye line. I've got a different look of you there. Is That's that a nice better? Is it piece of jewellery there? Thank you very much. That's yeah. a pilgrim. It's lovely. Got that for Christmas. Yeah. So I did. It's Not from nice. you, obviously, because you gave me nothing. Even though I gave you a bottle of Wally's Hut. I, I have a present for you. Oh yeah. Sure you have. Yeah. yeah. Is it gift wrappable? Yep. <laughs> ah, dear God. Simple things. Now, um, where's the uh, the introduction to you? There, I've just given it to you. Where? It's right in oh, front sorry. of you. Oh, sorry. Was this all changed around because of Roger? Sir Roger? No. Tuberty was in here as well. Ah, he, that's it. Yeah. He messed it up. He messed up. He's yeah. actually, Tuberty's after messing up the whole thing. Can I point something out about Ryan Tuberty that I worked out afterwards? Do you remember when I told you I was going to be start going out with Ryan that's for right. publicity reasons? You were going to go out with Ryan Tuberty and be, you were going to be squired by him. I was going to be squired by him <laughs> around the town. <laughs> and uh, Which he seemed to be fairly up, was up for, for as it. well. Yeah. Um, but no, you put the kibosh on that immediately because you said, quote, you're too old for him. Oh my. God. What age is Ryan? 37? Um, how old is Ryan? Is he about 37? Yeah, about yeah. that, yeah. What age am I? 42. What's the age gap there? Five, Five years. years. Is that against Just the remind rules? me, what age are you again? 52. Yeah. So what's the age gap between us? 10 years. What's wrong with that? That's just I'm a saying, gentleman. I'm just saying. I'm a gentleman. Intro. I'm a gentleman. Do you not think that the older lady has something to... <laughs> not at your <laughs> age, obviously. <laughs> Of course, oh, the older the old, lady. You think the older lady gets to overuse her pension book? The older That's lady has cruel. lots to offer. Lots to offer. You'll, of course, have a tinfoil covered pension book, won't you? <laughs> Tense, nervous headache, cold or flu symptoms. Do you sometimes feel a little under par? Where does that phrase come from, par? Do you know that? Golf, I suppose. Yeah, it does. Do you know what it means? No. If anybody can explain to you what that phrase means. I know what par. it means in, in golf terms. What does it mean in golf terms? It means finishing a course or finishing a hole on, what does it mean in golf on terms? the what does it mean level, golf on the terms? number that you're meant to do. What does it mean in so golf terms? So if they say you that hole, it'll take you three shots to get in that hole. And you do go, say, and you get into it in two shots. Imagine that. Yeah. Then you'd be one <laughs> under par. So you'd be very disappointed if you were under par, having got into it in two shots, wouldn't so you? So would I, yeah. And I presume the recipient would be as well. Now, you don't want to go to the hassle, not the mention. do not. Not to mention the cost. Sorry, I'm going over to you. see talk your talk GP. Talk hello, hello. Come on in, come on in. Do you want boiled sweets? I saw gay the other night, by the way. What? I saw gay the other night. Here's what? a subtle way of getting in a little plug. Hello, yeah. hello. Oh, go um, on. Tupperty, Ryan Tupperty, Jerry Ryan, speaking to Roger Moore together. <laughs> <laughs> like he's in the room with us. Um, he was at um, Macbex the other night. Get a little plug in. If it, you only go to see one show <clears throat> in the Olympia this year, go and see October, which opens <laughs> on the 6th of February. But if you go to see two shows in the Olympia this year, go and see Macbex. Now, is it good? It is good. It's the same it's guys good. who wrote Ikeno. No, 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 it no? Has, absolutely no, not. Guys, it's Gary guys. Cook and Malachi McKean who were in Ikeno. And Gary, Gary Cook is one of the Apre match. Yeah, he's grand, very talented. Told me a very dirty joke, which Did I'll he? tell you in the break. I okay. don't think it's probably fit for human consumption. Um, but um, you know they're all going to want to hear it now. But anyway, go yeah, on. Yeah, it's probably. Well, I'll tell you, and you can make you can make a you can make an editorial decision on it. Thanks. Um, but uh, no, it is very good. 
is it? Yeah, the second half, probably not great. The first half is really good. But overall, very entertaining. Yeah, they're ho- I gather they're very, hope- very hoping to bring it around the world. Well, it'll certainly fly in the UK. And I mean, I hope they do very well with it. And you know what? I'm going to say a little, slightly nasty thing. Mm. I don't think the radio ads for it are very good. And when I heard the radio ad, I kind of thought, oh God, is this going to be any good? And it's much better than the radio I ad. I like the radio. I think it's um. going does that mean I have to be there every night? Well, no. if you like the radio ad, you'll love it. But if you hate the radio ad, you'll love it anyway. Okay, it's right. Good. And when's your yoke opening? 6th of February. Called October. October. Tickets on sale now. Yeah. And are they go selling? And see that. They are, yeah. Really? Bit. But we could do it selling a few more, like, obviously, okay. so. I heard Pauline McGlynn there. She's in the ads, isn't she? With, She's in uh, the ads with Victoria, with yeah. Victoria Smurfit, who yeah. doesn't get yeah. a word in Are you going to go to it? Yeah, I am yeah. going to go to it, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Go on. I'm going to uh, be in the box on the opening night. Nobody goes to the box on the opening night. Do they not? No. Is that tradition? Nobody goes to the box. I'll bring you. I'll bring you. We'll go to a box one night. Will you squire me to I'll it? I'll squire you to it, <laughs> even though you're a little old for me. And uh, and we'll sit in a box so everyone can see us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'll wear up. the face off you all yeah. night. And, and everyone will go, on. there she is. Look, she's with him now. Look. There. We knew. <laughs> like Mary Robinson used to do with her husband, Nick. Really? The president. Desperate for it. Always going to the opening nights, sitting in the box, doing the Royal Wave, and then they'd be wearing the faces off each other. I think that's made up, isn't it? Yeah. Carry on. (laughs) Geneva calling, 25 (laughs) minutes to midday. Now, anyway, well, increasingly, (laughs) science is showing us that cures and treatments for ailments may lie not just with your doctor, but in your home. Fiona Looney's here with the kitchen cupboard essentials that can improve your health. That's right. Drink Domestos and you will kill all known germs in your mouth, but also yourself. Yourself. Yeah. And actually, on the Domestos thing, never try and bleach your hair with Domestos. <sighs> Who would Ooh, try and do that? I tried to do that, but at least I was sensible. Well, mildly sensible. I, I actually, somebody told me when I was a teenager that you could just, you know, wash your hair in Domestos and you would get peroxide no, no, white, your hair would hair. fall out. Well, Domestos, by the way, is a superb brand for getting rid of germs associated yeah. with stuff like poo and things like that. But um, not good for bleaching hair. Not good for bleaching your hair. And I know this because I actually, in a, a rare moment of sanity in my teenage years, I cut a little tiny bit of my hair off and put it in Colour Domestos it. to see what had happened. And it disappeared. <laughs> it actually disappeared. <laughs> so don't do that. What did I tell you? One of my worst Domestos experiences. Now, bearing in you mind, you say of course, that as that though you've had a load of bad. Uh, Domestos I know I've had a couple of bad bleach experiences, um, and I was Domestos was involved. I was cleaning something with Domestos, you know, cloths or something mm. like this. But I was also wearing a tuxedo, right? As you do, as I do, and I was getting ready to go to an event. Yeah. I was squiring a lady to an event. <laughs> was she a much younger lady? <laughs> she was a little bit younger than me. But you know what? I don't think people noticed. <laughs> now, um, so anyway, here we go. We're at the thing. So I'm going, oh, it's very good to go to G-Ride. And you got splashes. Now, I didn't notice I'd gotten the splashes. I yeah. didn't see them in immediately. But by the time I got to the event. You had brown spots on your toes. Brown spots all over oh, yeah, the thing. Yeah. And it like, forget about fixing it up. Now, another lady, you actually know who had a few drinks, but was still sort of functioning, said, I know what to do with that. Come outside for a second. And she said, excuse me, have you got a black marker? Yeah. Yeah. So she got a black marker from behind the concierge desk. It didn't work because it went red. Oh, right. So I now had a tuxedo with red stains on it. If you use an indelible black marker, does it work? It does work, provided okay. what you're you're doing it on black clothes, like obviously. All right, I've got a cut. <clears throat> what do I put on it? Oh, quick! Let's put some honey on that cut, Jerry, because putting a little honey on a gauze, what does that mean? And covering sort of it with the bandage, um, covering it with the bandage mm-hmm. speeds up the rate at which cuts heal. It also keeps it moist and stops it scarring. And uh, it's very good. Actually, I like... Yeah, there is some science behind the that. The science behind all of this. Yeah, this is all actually sound. For, for instance, you know, the uh, ancient Egyptians would have used honey to help heal wounds that were received when you were in battle. Only problem about honey is that while it is antibacterial, it it's not, you know, that's about all it does. Yeah. It won't cure cancer or anything like that or epilepsy no. or anything. But the, the, uh, the, I, what I like about this is the quote which says, mm. honey contains enzymes that produce low levels of hydrogen peroxide it on the skin. What? What? And this st- enzymes, e- e- enzymes right. that produce low levels of hydrogen peroxide on the skin, and this stimulates new cells to grow, says honey researcher Professor Peter Molan. Yeah, and you, I can have you heard be a honey him. researcher? Yes, because I was talking what to him. Job. I have talked to him yeah, live on the air in relation to manuka honey. 
But that's his job. He's a yeah. honey researcher. He's friendly uh, with bees. No, do you know what? You're, that, you're lying. You're absolutely lying because this guy's from New Zealand. I have spoken to him on the air. Deirdre, didn't we have that honey guy on? the professor From New honey. Zealand? Well, I don't know where, where he was. He was on the phone. Yeah. What yeah. time of day was it? I can't remember. It was during this programme. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. No, he was in studio. The bee doctor was. And you don't remember what he looks like? No, I mean honey researcher. Honey That's honey. a great job, though. Imagine oh, you'd never have any stress. Did he in your bring life. manuka honey in with them? What is manuka yes. honey? Manuka honey. Oh, I can't believe you don't know about this. Oh, I'm sorry. Manuka honey has all sorts of things in it. Everything. It's got antibiotics in it. It's got Botox in it. Cool. It's got all sorts of stuff in it. Yeah, I'll have to get some manuka honey. Oh. So and there's different levels of manuka. There's I'm bored 10, with the manuka 20, honey thing. Thirty, forty, fifty, a hundred. My granny used to put um, soap and sugar on cuts. That was her great one. Do you remember my big fat Greek wedding? Yeah. Remember the father used to spray windoline or whatever. <laughs> Every whatever it was that was ailing him, he'd spray windoline on it. I don't remember that, but because okay, I, right, I was enough. afraid I was later on watching it. Um, but sugar and soap mixed together in a little kind of poultice. My granny thought it was great, like for splinters and stuff. And did that work? No. No. Um, green tea works as mouthwash. I did not know that, but I do like a bit of green tea. From I like a bit of green yeah. tea myself, yeah. Yeah. In fact, I ran out of normal tea recently and because I was too lazy to do anything about it, I've been eating some free green tea that was given to me by Lyons. You've been eating it? I'm not eating it, drinking it. Sorry. Obviously. You've been eating it, haven't no, you? No, You have. You've been sitting at home eating tea bags again. I warned you about that. Okay. I get batch loaf. <laughs> I do use butter. A couple of green tea bags. And I'm telling you. That's kind of the new Ireland meets the old Ireland, isn't yeah. it? You've got your batch, you've got your bit of Kerry gold, <laughs> but you've got green tea in there yeah. as well. Yeah. That'd be a horrible meal, wouldn't it? Yeah. I like green tea, though. No, I you? like green tea. Yeah. I do, yeah. It's a bit of an acquired taste. I think the first time you taste it, you go, oh, God, well, I'm Well, first writing. of all, the first time you taste it, you go, that's not tea. That's yeah. green yeah. water there. Who and are then they you calling? go, sure, where's the milk? Yeah, like, how ridiculous. could you have tea without And milk? you cannot put milk into green tea. I've seen people Oh, do. Jesus, no. Oh. Oh, you shouldn't put milk into any tea apart from breakfast tea. Mm. Actually, no. speaking of green tea, did you hear Jerry Crosby's gone Japanese? I vaguely, I heard a mention of that. Roger Moore says, just suggested he was Japanese. Yeah. Is that not the most bizarre thing of the week? <laughs> I, I'm, in my mind, I've got a mental picture of Harry and I'm just trying to... Yeah, I'm not entirely getting that, but... It was a great moment, though, the other night when James Bond suggested to one of Ireland's leading tycoons that he was looking a little Japanese. Can I just say, on the whole Roger Moore front, yeah. he's a lovely man and uh, yeah. he's very entertaining and all that. But you know what? If you own the most expensive pen in the world and you never use it, why don't you feck and sell it and give the money to UNICEF I'll since you're so bloody concerned about them? Oh, my God. Now... You always have a bitter word to say. <laughs> You're the kind know, of person who would have said... I taxi driver. Man. What were you giving out to your taxi driver? <laughs> I just mentioned that when he was saying, expensive pen, ho, oh, oh, never used it. And oh. I just said to the taxi driver, I said, why don't you fucking sell it and give the money to UNICEF then? And my taxi have driver... you an expensive pen, have you? God, look at it. It's not even mine. I just robbed <laughs> it off you. Of course I don't have an expensive... I don't have an expensive anything. Did you ever have an expensive pen? No. Ever? No. Never? I, I won one. I won a cross pen once. That's not... Oh, I well, didn't. I suppose it is. It's more expensive than these pens. And uh, I didn't sell it. Um, pick another one. I dandruff. <laughs> Have you? Why what am I going to do? I dandruff. Why don't you wash your hair in vinegar? Now, the vinegar thing. Again, from my teenage years, I remember this. I didn't know it fought dandruff, but it does make your hair very shiny, vinegar. Really? However, it also makes it very smelly. And that's the downside. But apparently it also, um, and I never knew this, dandruff is caused by an overgrowth of yeast organism. Yeah, mm. so if you, it's alkaline. It's kind of a yeah. alkaline thing going on. I in won't tell so, you what it's called because so, it's too hard to pronounce. So throw in the acidic vinegar and bingo, there you go. Put in, so apply, apply it to your scalp, leave it for an hour or two, then rinse. And um, the side effect is though, it'll clear up your dandruff and you'll have very shiny hair. Ah, oh, I've got indigestion. Oh no, have a chilli pepper. Crazy, what? you might say. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Because obviously normally people suffer indigestion after eating chilli peppers. But yeah. it's been proven by chilli pepper researchers, presumably, um, that if you have chilli pepper pills before meals, people experienced a 60% reduction in symptoms within five weeks. I think take it in tablet form, though, rather than... And do you know what the other down. effect that chilli has on you? You know that other effect? It makes your bottom very hot. Bum burn. Yeah, yeah. you have to put the toilet roll in the fridge. <laughs> 
like my friend, not like me. Um, You've never done that, have you? No, but I do know somebody who has. uh, You're better off just taking Udo's oil tablets and coating the pipe as another doctor friend. Udo's oil does a lot of things though, doesn't it? I take take an Udo's. Very good for your hair. I take a probiotic, an Udo's probiotic. Super potency. Have you heard of CoQ10? I have not. It's one of the latest cardiovascular tablets. Oh, hey. <laughs> and I'm also taking, what's, what's it called, Reservatrol. How many tablets do you take oh, a day? Oh, dozens. thing called Reservatrol. You know when they said red wine. Do you have one wine. of those blister packs that old people have? No, no. So I, that you'll remember no, no, to no, take No, 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 no. The real old person one is the one that's... You the know, cart. It's, it's got, lo- no, it's a little, it's a kind of a, it's, a, it's about 20 little boxes all together yeah. in one unit. And you open up each little box and it's got your tablet in yeah. it. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, well, I don't have one of them. But how many yet. tablets a day do you take? I'll tell you what I take in the morning. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Before I go to bed, I take Lipitor for right. my cholesterol. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else do I take? I take two Udo's oils at, at night. Yeah. So this is still night time. Okay, it's night time. Okay. Right, that's then I wake straight. up in the morning. I uh, take t- another two Udo's oils. Is that too many Udo's oils, do you think? No, no, it's okay. about right. Right, five. And then I take Reservatrol, which is the red wine tablet. Right. And then I take the Cocutin. Right, is that one is tablet? Cardi- cardiovascular stuff and also helps neutralise the negative effects right. of the statin. Yeah. And I take Pharmaton. So that's one tablet as well. Yeah. So that's eight tablets. Yeah. That you take look every at me. day. Look at me. Eight tablets. Look at me. You're fabulous. <laughs> if you stopped taking all those tablets, would it have oh, any I, effect I, on I you? I die in an hour. See, the mad part Are to you me... Are mad? You, as you're listing those... It's the, one, my the one the terror part is that I may head, run out of one of the tablets. The mad part of my head is actually adding up the Weight Watchers points in those tablets. What? Eight tablets, that's probably about two Weight Watchers points. Possibly more, possibly as many as four. But they're just little tablets. It doesn't matter. They're, they're, they're going into your body. There's nutrition in them. Plus, if they've got gelatine casings, they're, they add to the Weight Watchers thing as well. Well, the Coco 10 which I think I'm pronouncing correctly, that has got a gelatin case. The Pharmaton does. Pharmaton's very good. It's got ginseng in it. Mm. Um, the other ones don't have anything in them at all. On them, should I say. Yeah. As far as I What tablets do you take? Well, I, I reluctantly take, I would love not to take any tablets at all. I, in an ideal world, I wouldn't take mm. any. But I'm obliged to take Galfer. What's that? Iron. One Galfer tablet a day. Yeah. Is I that take, because of ladies' trouble? No, not really. I just never really retained iron. Plus it might. Yeah. Um, I take two um, fish oils. Udo jobs. No, just seven seas. Because, cause, because Udo's is not fish oil. Udo's is like flaxseed and stuff. Yeah, like no, that. I take yeah. fish oils for yeah. the cholesterol. Oh yeah, well done. And uh, what else do I take? The pro- the Udo's probiotic. Yeah. So I take four, but I'd rather take none. But if I don't take them, then you'd die. No, I wouldn't die, but I just you know you'd have die. Higher you'd be things. dead in a flash. If I died in an hour, you'd be dead in two. If I had a big bleed, as my doctor is fond of saying, if you ever have a big bleed, you could be in real trouble. Why? Because I don't retain iron very well. I don't absorb iron. So that's why I have to keep taking iron because I keep going off it and then he does blood tests and go, oh, well, what do they no mean iron. by a big bleed? If you kicked my head in. Oh, like and if I, I shot you or something. Yeah, yeah. 